Hey IV2 Econ students, Mr. McLaughlin here. Um, just in case you don't know who I am, there's probably some people there I haven't met. Um, the question is, where's here? Well, I think you guys know, but I've been, I'm one of the ones who's stuck with visa issues, so I'm in Utah, and uh, I'm looking forward to joining you guys there in uh, South Africa as quickly as possible. In the meantime, this is kind of how class is going to go, um, we're going to find ourselves in a digital environment. Even once I get back there, this is something that I'm moving towards doing. So a lot of what we'll, what we'll do, even you know in a few months when I'm there, well, hopefully a few weeks, um, even when I'm there is going to be very much like what's happening right now. You'll get very used to seeing these cool whiteboards that I uh, went to Home Depot and got made. Um, anyhow, let's talk just nuts and bolts for a bit. Um, this is my email address. Um, obviously, we're all the same here at school. Don't forget this second L. That's really easy to miss, and a lot of people do, and they can't ever end up getting the email because they forgot it. Okay. Um, once you guys have your slates, and I've been told that that'll be by next Wednesday, um, Final Sight will be the main place that we live. It's great for turning in work. If you turn in work via email, I don't know where it is. You know, it gets lost. I get tons of emails in a day. If you turn in work via Final Sight, it goes to the assignment that that you're turning in work for. Um, videos will be on there, assignments will be on there, so get very used to using this, obviously. Um, let's skip down here. My videos are also all on YouTube. I suggest that you look me up. It's just Ross McLaughlin. My icon is my cool glasses. See? Um, and on there, there's a playlist called IB2 Year One Review. Right now, that's all that's there, um, or that's all that's there that you'll care about. Um, and I'll make more playlists as we go through the year, obviously. Um, so yeah, subscribe to me and you'll see when I update videos and all that. I suggest that you, on your smartphone, get a PDF app creator. Basically, it's a photo, but it makes it a little bit nicer. It kind of, you know, digitally cleans it up and all of that. Um, this will be real useful whenever you do something uh, hand-drawn. So if you hand-draw diagrams or if you write a paragraph in class, anything that's done by hand, that's going to be a little bit better than simply taking a picture. This is okay too, but that's better, I promise. Um, you'll be happy once you uh, learn to do that. Likewise, the library copier, um, you can scan things on it. There's actually, if you go looking around through my channel, there's a video on me using the old copier, but the new one, uh, the new one works much the same. Anyway, you can scan things on it and directly email it to yourself, and then via that, you can put it onto, uh, you can put it onto Final Sight. Okay, so the second question then is, well, where are you? Well, I guess you're in HSL 2, but more importantly, you're in year 2 of your IB career. For IB economics, the two topics that we'll study are international trade and economic development. In year 1, you studied micro and macro, and I see year 1 as very much being a theoretical year. Um, if I'm back in time for back to school night, I'll say the same thing to your parents. Year one is about theory. It's about kind of learning the tools of economics, supply and de demand, uh, you know, theory of the firm, uh, all, all that stuff that you guys know. This is very much about theory, and then year two is very much about applying the theory. It's not straight micro to international and macro to economic development, but you can see it kind of does lean that way. In international trade, We'll talk a lot about micro concepts. You'll see the demand and supply diagram a bunch. Okay, so I, I guess what I'm trying to get across is this: don't think that we're done with these two things. We're not. These are the big issues of economics, and we're going to apply them down um, in the second year. But we'll talk more about that when it's time for that. You can see that uh, development I do think is more of a split between micro and macro, but that's probably not that important. Like I say, we'll talk about it at a later date. Okay, something that you care about and that's doing well in my class or really doing well in IB economics. Um, obviously there's a test at the end of the year that's kind of important. Um, basically I see all learning, but especially economics. I see all learning as it's like this metaphor of building something, building a wall, a house, whatever. You're going to make it out of bricks, but the bricks on their own, if you just stand them up, well, they'll get knocked over real easily. Not a very good wall. 
you need mortar, cement I would call it, but anyway, you need mortar to hold it all together, to give it strength. Without both of them, I mean, if you just had a big old bucket of cement, that wouldn't make a very good wall either. So you need them both, and that's, again, that's the metaphor I like to see learning as. Here's the deal. The bricks, these are things that you just have to learn. You have to commit yourself to sitting down and going through a list of vocabulary words or theories, uh, maybe diagrams, just going, okay, when it's time to draw the kinked demand curve, I know how to draw it. Do I understand it? Hopefully, but at least I know how to draw it. Until I can draw it, and until I know the vocabulary, you know, when I talk to you about a inferior good, do you know immediately what that is, what it associates with, oh yeah, we're talking about uh, income elasticity of demand. Whew, I hadn't thought about that all summer. Glad I got that. Anyway, um, do you know what we're talking about? If not, well, obviously your, your response isn't going to be very good. But just knowing what an inferior good on its own is, well, that's no good either. Again, you have to be able to associate it with, well, we're talking about income elasticity of demand, and we're talking about factors that might change income in an economy, etc., etc. Okay? So again, the bricks are, are all these things I have over here in red. The mortar, again, what I call the art of economics, like what is it that makes you a good economic student, that's putting these together in a way that is meaningful, and really seeing all the connections in between. So some of these are kind of half and half. Application, uh, knowing that if uh, later on we're going to talk about an excise tax, well, you could just straight up memorize that an excise tax is always going to go with a cigarette, uh, alcohol, uh, gasoline, or, or petrol. Maybe you don't even know what that means, but you know that, that, that those two things go together. Still, there's some art in putting them together the right way. Analysis, likewise. I can memorize, I can say, okay, every time I put a tax on, it shifts the supply curve straight up. I, I don't know what that means, I don't know what, uh, what the effects are. Some of that I've memorized. But you better know what that means, and you better know what the effects of that are going to be, and that gets more to the, uh, to the art of economics, more to the mortar. Evaluation, obviously, that's very much just your skill level. Again, seeing connections, seeing cause and effect, comparing and contrasting, and all that. Some of the other ones, oh, by the way, these are the AOs, if you're not familiar with those. AO1 and AO2, I'll talk about these all the time. It's also, it's, it's pertinent to what we'll see uh, in a second. Um, AO1 and AO2, um, I, I see this as kind of like introducing yourself, like, hi, I'm Mr. McLaughlin. AO2 is kind of, well, I know what Mr. McLaughlin is like in class. AO3 is, uh, well, you know, we're good friends or whatever. Um, AO4 is kind of off, off on its own. It's kind of these... Um, uh, skills that are really unique to economics. So drawing diagrams, again, you can memorize all the diagrams. You need to be able to use them though. You need to be able to shift them and talk about what it means so there's some art there. Quantitative, right? I, I've noticed that I spelled this wrong. It's because I wrote it backwards to get it to line up. Anyway, quantitative, um, yeah, I can memorize all the formula. I can plug in the numbers in the right place. But when I talk about the A variable, when I talk about the, uh, uh, the demand function, do I understand what the A variable means? Do I understand that it's the autonomous level of demand that, that nobody's going to demand past that? So it's mostly bricks, but there is a little bit of like further, deeper understanding there. Here's the deal. With this part especially, a little strategy can go a long way. If you haven't understood what I'm saying yet, or if you're still not quite there, being good at this, being good at putting all the rest together, that's a six, that's a seven. Probably a five. If you're really, really, really good at all the bricks, maybe you can squeeze yourself into a five. But really to get to those higher levels, you've got to be able to put it all together. A little strategy goes a long way, and we'll work a lot with this. Uh, what you'll do later in the day is uh, a strategy that I like to use. And then the second part of this video that i got to go somewhere else and, uh, and tape, that's that as well. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, I'm back. And now I'm gone. Um, go ahead and take out this piece of paper that should have been given to you by now. It's called uh, the command terms. And this is my first bit of strategy that you really need to pay attention to. 
oftentimes we just jump to uh, you know we look at the topic of a question we see oh it's going to be about uh, indirect taxes and we just start writing and we haven't really decided what it is we need to do um, so let's look at a few of these first of all notice what I was pointing at before uh, AO1 AO2 to 4 and again AO1 is simpler AO3 is most complex and then AO4 is just kind of you know on its own um, let's look at a few of these let's look at this one right here at state and it's AO1 real quickly uh, state your name no go ahead state your name okay I, I, I bet all of you just said your name right you didn't say well my name is this and, and here's why my name is this so for example my name's Ross and that was my mom's maiden name before she got married do I need to say that for state no if you see a question that says state, you need to give a specific name value or other brief answer without explanation or calculation. As opposed to define, which is also AL1, but now I need to give the precise meaning. So maybe there I go ahead and give some explanation in there. There's lots of these, if you go through and look at them, there's lots of them that are very similar to each other. And you need to be very careful and be very um, exact about what you need to do. So for example, comment is AO2, and here you need to give a judgment. Okay, you need to say what it means. Whereas with analyze, all you need to do is say why something happens. No judgment is necessary. So by paying attention to the exact command term that you're working with, you can definitely improve how you do on a given paper.